Hello everyone, welcome to my guide on trade. In this episode, we're going to talk about different trade options, how they work, and most importantly, how to manipulate the trade to make a lot of money. So how to, for example, make purchase prices very low for some type of goods and different tricks that you can use to make money using trade. So first up, let's talk about the comparison. Let's compare the trading portal, trading bridge, and trading shuttle. So first thing we got to talk about is what do they pay in order to use them so the trading bridge and the trading portal they only require electricity however the trading shuttle needs electricity and uranium next very important thing is is your customer dynamic or set for the bridge the customer is set it's between two set cities and you cannot change it same with the trading portal that's just between the city and the orbital station you cannot change it but the trading shuttle you can change it and it's not not only that you don't have to set it once at a time we can change it over time you can decide yeah you know like right now i'm trading with the orbital station next time i want to trade with the sps center or the dream workplace you can change it to another city so this is a very good advantage of the trading portal now next thing we want to talk about is now, next thing we want to talk about is time. The trading portal opens at 8 in the morning and it closes at 14. So, however, the bridge and the trading shuttle, they, they go continuously at any time when they're essentially filled up and the bridges keep moving back and forth. So, uh, the trading portal certainly works a lot less. And the fourth thing to talk about is capacity. The trading portal has a capacity of 25. If it's upgraded, the bridge has 10 and the uh, trading shuttle has 20. But this is per unit. So you, uh, theoretically, you could be doing 18 of each one of these types with one trading shuttle. That will work. However, the problem will be drones because the drones will probably not be able to carry it all there. But you can use it. Now, drones are actually the fourth thing that we got to talk about. And this is very important with the trading shuttle. The way this works is that with the trading portal, you have to use your drones to set it to the trading portal. Then it's going to be moved to the opposition. That's not really important. But with the bridge, you have to use your drones on both sides of the bridge. Of the bridge so in both cities you're going to need drones to carry the stuff to the bridge then the train will move it to the other city and there has to be a different tra train that carries it out if it doesn't care it's gonna the same uh, item will keep moving back and forth and will kind of create a backlog for you so you're gonna make sure that uh, you have enough drones on both sides however trading shuttle works a little bit differently the way the trading shuttle works is that it will actually come to the other city and it will it will automatically unload and load without the drones of the other city. So for example, if I'm sending a trade shuttle from the SPS center to the heavenly water, the shuttle will come here and it will automatically unload here without any drones from the heavenly water doing anything. This can be extremely powerful, especially mid game. Because in towards the late game, you might need the trading shuttle to, to move to the orbital station. But mid game, this can be very powerful because you can save up on the drone work in one city. Because the shuttle will only need it at the other city. That's very, very cool. And you can watch it right now. You can watch the trading shuttle come. And you can see, if you if you zoom in on it, that the prices will go from the shuttle. That means it's automatically be selling and buying the stuff. No drones need to actually fly towards it, it just does it by itself. So this is very, very powerful and uh, it will really save up a lot of drones. You can see it, you can see the prices flying from that, doing it by itself. Now, let's talk about the trick. So, the first trick is about how to make goods very cheap. This is especially effective if you know that you're going to be continuously buying some type of, type of goods. For example, for me, in the Dream Workplace, I wanna, I'm going to be continuously buying fish from the heavenly water, this other city, because I just don't have a source of fish. So right now it costs me 10 to buy a fish, which is very expensive, right? So I, what I wanna do is I wanna lower this to something very low because I know that I'll forever be buying this. So this is better. So how you do that? Well, the price is dependent on on the actual amount that you have in stock because the logic is this. If I have a lot of stuff in stock, if I have a lot of food at home, like here you can see, then I probably don't need much food. So they have to sell it to me for cheap in order to make me buy it, which makes sense. That's the reality in life. So but you can manipulate this. What you can do is you can say you want to do one time purchase of maybe 200 or, or, or 100 fish. And you say you want to buy if you have less than 140. So we'll be buying those 40 that we wanted to buy. But we, we are going to keep 100 in stock forever and that will lower the price significantly. So let me fast forward for you and you can look at the new prices after this happens. 
Now look at this. At this one we have 97 fish in stock and now I've lowered the price from 10 to 2. But at this point, and I've gotten to it, I'll actually only be paying 2 for fish because I'll constantly have about 100 in stock and this, the same way that we were buying like the buy a of less than 40, it now just says buy of less than 140 and we can keep the 100 there forever. We'll just be buying the same amount but now it actually costs only 1 credit. So I've lowered this 10 times. This can be especially useful if you have one city that's kind of struggling on money, a different city that doesn't struggle on money, so we can use this to kind of send the money over. Make it very cheap for this one city, which can be very, very helpful. As you can see, this is now one. You can do the same with the orbital station. It works the same way. Just make sure that you have a lot in stock and that will significantly decrease your price. So. Now the second trick is essentially the same from the opposite direction. So if I know that I'm uh, producing fish in the dream in the heavenly water and I want to make sure that I sell it for a high price, let's look at the other city and make sure that they don't have a high stock of that. So for example, if the dream workers, I could turn it back and make sure they do a one-time sale of 100 fish and then set this back to buy at less than 40 and that way I can make sure that we're selling it for a high amount. So just use this trick to make sure. The prices is somewhat as affected by the stock in the city that you're like buying it from as well, but it's much easier to manipulate it on the other side. So that's what I'm telling you about it. Now, so the trick is if you have a city that's not producing anything interesting, but you still want to make money, well, you can make this city sort of a merchant. So we already know how to make the uh, price to buy cheap. So now we know that we can have a fish that we buy for one dollar, but we could sell it to a different city. So Let's, for example, look at the SPS Center. You can use my trick number two to make sure that you have, they have to pay a lot for fish. Now, but they're already paying six, dollars, six credits for fish, so that's pretty good for me. So all you have to set up is you have to say, sell if more than 100 fish. This will ensure that you always have that 100 fish in stock to make the price to buy the fish cheap. And you can be sell it for a high amount. You're already making a profit of five credits every time you sell a single fish. So this can be extremely powerful because you can use this to make money even though you're not producing anything interesting in your own city. Now there is another trick that comes to trade and this is a law that you can sign in the town hall that allows you to, to do this disaster mode. Entering the city into disaster mode allows you to not pay for matter, food, water and batteries. However, this, this is fantastic if you have a new city that you're like starting out, for example, you're just like building it and you don't want to pay for the matter especially and for the like starting stuff however this i don't feel like this is very beneficial to have like continuously after you finish building up the city because the other cities now will have to pay for that city all the time well if you did what we just did like uh, lowering the price you're only lowering the price on one particular item so the other city will not go bankrupt but if you're essentially having the city in the disaster most the other cities will have to fund it completely so in order to make that work you'll have to make sure that the other cities have a lot of money which is still possible and if you want to know how to make money in your cities watch my money guide but um, I think it's easier to just use the disaster mode if you kind of need to help the city build up if it's just starting and then later on it's better to just manipulate the prices this way yeah I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks about trade and I'll see you in the next video bye bye